I will not let time have dominion over my thoughts! I will not let time have dominion over my thoughts. I will not let time have dominion over my thoughts. I will not let time have dominion over my thoughts. I will not let time have dominion over my thoughts. I will not let time have dominion over my thoughts. I will not let time have dominion over my thoughts. I will not let time have dominion over my thoughts. Shot. Welcome back to Life Lessons in Film. Hello. Today we will be making sense of life through Megalopolis. Uh, so we're not in our usual uniforms, you may have noticed, you may have picked up on that. Because we just, you know, it's cold and uh, after this movie wore us out, we just couldn't really be bothered. <laughs> yeah. And it's not really the usual kind of thing that we do, because really this is just going to be our initial thoughts if we just wanted to capture it raw. What do you think? Should we just do the whole thing at this point? Like we can do the characters real quick. Kind of a quick st <laughs> I can't. We're not really feeling like doing our usual kind of characters, themes, uh, analysis, uh, burning questions, because it's just overall, everything feels like it fell short, and so we don't really feel that drive to cover everything in that way. Yeah, we're low, this disheartened. This is a, a analysis of why are we not able to do a normal review, this is why. I think it still allowed us to have some interesting conversations about what does it mean for a movie to not hit a home run with its execution, and when you lose immersion, when it feels stilted and, and stunted and broken up and, and not a consistent, coherent story that inspires and that you get lost in that you fall in love with what is it that it was missing okay um, so initial thoughts i know you 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 did you were it was a, it was hard for you it was a slog i really was upset when i look at this movie there are a lot of metaphors there are a lot of references to socioeconomic issues political issues of the day could have been so incredible mm -hmm. and it makes me sad that it wasn't i was feeling underwhelmed because i was actually quite excited for it new coppola movie and the, the trailer it just seemed like a really interesting concept that was really going to talk about a lot of things that other movies that are from big studios just are too afraid to be too challenging they want to be safe go now from visionary writer and director francis ford coppola comes an event nothing can prepare you for imagine today's society as a branch of civilization about to reach a dead end is this way we're living the only one that's available to us. This movie really seemed like it wasn't necessarily afraid of delving deeper into those issues and philosophies and big questions. There was a lot of juice in there, but it did feel very convoluted. There's so many movies that people have talked about that people have disliked, and, mm -hmm. and then we watched it and we're like, why do people hate it? And so we thought that this would be similar. Yeah. I trust the opinions of other people in the field. I trust the opinion of what other directors think of a director's work because it's always the people that are actually the peers that I find their opinions hold most weight and not people that have never themselves attempted this stuff. So yeah. when I hear critics say, bashing a movie or something, I take it with a grain of salt and then it also makes me more curious. So I think I was feeling disappointed when, oh, maybe they had a bit of a point here. That's very disappointing, especially from a director that I really like. Adam Driver. The pangs of despised love, the long delay, the insolence of office and the spurns that patient merit of the unworthy takes when he himself might in his quiet as make with a bare bodkin. Where's my vodka? We love Adam mm -hmm. Driver. Yeah, you, you said when we were watching the first bit, like he was kind of wasted here. And maybe he was. <laughs> yeah, I said that. I think that... It was a very bold movie, so it gets a lot of points for that, because especially, this is the reason I wanted to watch it, and that it was too bad that it was taken out of theaters so soon, because compared to most movies that are played in theaters right now, which are just rehashes or remakes or sequels, this movie looked original, and I like originality. It's worth a lot to me. Overall, after finishing it, I think there was some really cool stuff, some really good ideas, some innovative storytelling and, and film techniques, some funny moments. That's it. I'm just doing a solo. Some memorable lines and, and mm. good quotes. Ralph Waldo Emerson said the end of the human race will be that we'll eventually die of civilization. But trend is not destiny. Time, show me the future. Together, we'll discover new paths which lead to the unknown world ahead of us. 
we going to live as a species in the future? It's such a hard thing to imagine because right now, most people feel like, this is it. We've reached it. We can't get any better. There's no future civilization. Because even a lot of sci-fi type movies that try to imagine, you know, humans in the future, a lot of times they end up just kind of doing a similar situation to how people are living now, but with like better technology and stuff. So to really imagine a utopia, that's a very hard thing to do. It was a big mouthful to try and eat and it was just kind of, maybe choked a bit on the, on the burger. It was too many patties maybe, but the thing that really dragged down the most for me was the main actress, Natalie Emanuel or something, uh, her name was, I think. I see everyone in their neighborhood, creating together, learning together, and they're celebrating. They're <laughs> they created shelter. What about those standing in your way, who like it the way it is? I found her struggling to keep up with the other actors, and that felt like it dragged down the movie. I was unhappy with the casting director, <laughs> and I thought about different people that could have been better for the role and wondered why that didn't happen. So go back to the club, bear it all, and stock the kind of people that you enjoy. Fine. I will. The movie meandered. I felt like it was really trying to cram in so many things. There's certain movies like The Matrix that are so beautifully metaphorical and entertaining and creative and immersive. You're just in it the whole mm -hmm. time. I was really wanting to get immersed in this movie, but it was me yeah. forcing myself. Like, it felt like I really was like, no, give it time. Desperately like, oh, that was pretty cool. And like, oh, I'm liking this right now. This is good. Okay, keep, keep it like this. This scene is really good. I'm going to enjoy this and I want to try and savor it because I don't know if it's going to last. Certain movies, you don't have to worry about savoring the moment because you know the whole thing is going to take you for a beautiful ride and it's just going to be exhilarating all the way through. That's the vibe that I got. I think that you were definitely fighting for it more mm -hmm. than I was fighting for it. I gave up very soon after. Yeah, very soon I mean, probably after. 10 minutes in. 10 minutes in, I said, <laughs> I I can't. But then I was just kind of like, yeah. are we watching this because it's Francis Ford Coppola? And yes, <laughs> that is why. But at first you didn't say that. Right. You were just like, well, no, I just like to give things a chance. I'm like, yeah, what are you, yeah. come on. Yeah, we've you're watched, like other movies. We've, we've watched other movies. Sister of the Traveling like, Pants. I was, was ready terrible. to also. Like admit. within one minute, yeah. we're just like, what's going on? There were a lot of minor roles that I didn't think really did justice to what the movie was trying to do versus like Awakenings. We talked mm -hmm. about how the minor characters in yeah. Awakening, everyone, someone who showed up, who appeared on screen mm -hmm. for one second yeah. was just top notch. Hi, Sydney. Hi. And I'm thinking with this kind of movie, that's the kind of expectation I'm hoping that it was going to be like. And then on top of that, some of the scenes, I said like, they kind of remind me of like those Hallmark movies where you just don't really expect a lot. Maybe that's doing it on purpose, maybe not. I, I think it could have been partly a stylist. There are certain scenes, especially where the acting was such that it almost seemed like he was trying to do like um, homage to old classic epic Roman movies like mm -hmm. Ben-Hur. Cleopatra, all these old big epic movies because there was, you know, referencing old Rome. I do wonder if some of that was, you know, in reference to that because I think certain directors really like paying homage to classic movies that they grew up watching because I, I know there were, there's not only a reference to Star Wars, but it's like you're a little tall for a sixth grader. Holy Jesus Christ. Aren't you a big, big for a sixth grader? <laughs> Too short for a stormtrooper? Huh? Oh, the uniform. Coppola and Lucas are friends, so like there's definitely a reference there. It seemed like he very much referenced Fight Club with dialogue similar to the Brad Pitt monologue. Yet there's always time to convince them to use money they don't have, to buy things they don't need, to imitate people they don't like. Advertising has us chasing cars and clothes. Working jobs we hate, so we can buy shit we don't need. I think he was playing around with a lot of creative editing techniques and trippy sequences and interesting ways of visual storytelling, but I think it might have just been a bit too much. I think it came together more in the second half, I think. Yeah, me too. Uh, the characters got more development, the interactions were more interesting between the characters. There were some good parts that were really focusing on, like, discussion on dystopia and, and where the species is going. Utopias offer no ready-made solutions.
Well, they're not meant to offer solutions. They're meant to ask the right questions. Yes, but utopias turn into dystopias. So we should just accept this endless conflict that we live in now? I wish the movie would focus more on that. Again, going back to The Matrix, there was a lot of different influences that went into that movie. This one just seemed like it really wanted to have a beautiful blend of different influences and things that could be layered on top of each other, but it just didn't seem to there'd be some scenes that seemed so cheap yeah. or, or rushed to get done and then there are other scenes and that transitions clean. that were so cool yeah. and creative it's a unique movie there's, there's some interesting stuff in there interesting film style and editing directing but it was definitely let down for me for me too i definitely know that it was a major let down more mm -hmm. for him just because of your interest yeah in francis Ford coppola it's not just about the little bits that you like it's holistically yeah what did the movie do you like the movie yeah. and for me i was hoping i would love it yeah. i just don't even like it yeah and i'm sad because his wife passed away and it was dedicated to her yeah. and you know I, I wanted like kind of like a legacy kind of thing mm -hmm. you know what I mean mm -hmm. like the last little thing where it's like you wrap it up you know what I mean it was a miss unfortunately you swung for it and it was a miss or as a foul ball kind of made yeah. contact but not in the right direction he tried I want to be the kind of person who tries he tried we can give him that and he really tried and it was challenging but not really necessarily in a good way all the time felt like half the movie was filmed by one yeah. person half the film was you know, by someone else, and like, then they, they again put it together, and uh, it was different from one scene to the next. Forensic examination of the photos of sexual acts revealed that they were doctored and not authentic. Yeah, like that scene with Vesta, those right. actors just look. It looks so overdone yeah, and very... It, it looked like stock footage of people being surprised yeah. watching TV, yeah. What can we do? Is this society, is this way we're living, the only one that's available to us? And when we ask these questions, when there's a dialogue about them, that basically is a utopia. It seems to be one of the themes in the movie is like getting the conversation started is one of the most important parts and that's a utopia in and of itself is just having the ability to have these questions come up. And one of the big questions is like, how do we build a better future? And he's kind of, first you have to start small, get a bit of land and you develop the technology and show people that it's possible to live without debt and the constant war and inequality. More and more people see that it's possible and then they get on board. Maybe that's what he wanted to do with this movie is that, <laughs> what's going on? The cheese, is it the cheese? <laughs> Or the hot chocolate. Maybe the hot chocolate. Maybe he was just wanting to get the conversation started. He's looking around. No one else is doing it. I'm going to do it. We're going to get the conversation started about seriously, as a species, let's have the conversation. Where are we going next? How do we get past all the uh, threats of nuclear annihilation and devastating the planet and all this stuff? How do we get past it? We have to get past it or we die. We have to start having that conversation. At least he put that conversation in the movie. Now the movie is getting talked about a lot. So in that way, he, he succeeded. That's a, a beautiful goal to have. But a movie is more than just the goal or yeah. the vision. You want it to be a work of art that people will pay attention to it so that they are then invested in really internalizing the vision. It was just not tight in a lot of ways. I felt like, you know, Dustin Hoffman's character, <laughs> which was barely in it. He kind of plays like the, the sleazy, not even politician, I guess, or maybe he backstabs everybody. I think there are characters similar to him, like in the Gladiator movie, but I felt like the whole political intrigue aspect of Gladiator was so much tighter. They weren't trying to spoon feed you, which is great. Well, in some ways, maybe it felt like they were. Yeah, it's a weird mix of like really did, spoon feeding you like and were. not and, and that's not always, giving you anything. And that's the trick. That's with movies that I feel like fall short and the execution isn't there. A lot of the more mainstream movies fall into this too, is they under explain what they need to explain more and they over explain what they don't need to explain. It's like, no, no, I get it. I get it. Move on. You're wasting time. I already, you know, I picked it up the first time. Thanks. You don't need to do it again. Yeah. And then there are things that it's like, wait, maybe a little, exp a little exposition here would have been nice just so that I know what's going on here. There was some fine writing in it, but it was unfulfilled. When does an empire die? Does it collapse in one terrible moment? No, no, but there comes a time when its people no longer believe in it. Then does an empire begin to die? There are some 
great themes in there. You know, the natural degradation and, and cycle of empires when the corrupt and the powerful just get too lost in their decadence and they just completely forget to maintain and to be just rulers and they, they just let everything fall apart. And then, you know, you get populists taking advantage, but they're not necessarily good people either. Like, you, you just see how everything falls apart. So, like, there's good themes that we could talk about, but it's yeah. like, you kind of feel like because they weren't fulfilled, they like, weren't they, weren't, tight, yeah. they weren't complete, the cake was left half-baked. Yeah, my heart yeah. isn't in, in it, really, because of how incomplete the movie yeah. felt. Yeah, it'd be kind of like if, if The Matrix is like, oh, imagine if the whole coming out of the reality that you were used to and then realizing there's other ways to live or there's a whole new reality that you were kind of in a prison before. But then they just left it there. Like, they didn't really explore it. They didn't really, yeah. like, show how that affects different people and how other people want to go back in there because they don't like having their mind expanded to a point where it can't go back to the way it used to be. If they never really explored that much further, you'd be like, okay, yeah, I mean, it's always a cool concept, right? Plato's Cave type deal, but you did nothing with it. So why did you do it in the first place, basically? Yeah. That's what it kind of feels like with this yeah, movie. It's like, you brought up a lot of great, things. profound themes, but you didn't really do much with them. You rounded third and then you tripped before you got home base. And it's a lot of baseball metaphors, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I was watching a bit it of works. the uh, World Series. Uh, Go Dodgers. Did I like it? I think I thought it was okay. I guess it got points for originality and ambition mm -hmm. and setting high lofty goals because it's refreshing simply in that so many movies, they're so scared to try anything and it's very Anymore. disappointing. So yeah. points for creativity and, and shooting for the moon did not reach the moon at all. Didn't get out of the stratosphere, but it really tried to reach lofty goals. And I appreciate all the motivations there, I guess. Personally, this was still less of a waste of time for me than like any of the, the other churned out cookie cutter type movies. A lot of this stuff I'll remember with the hand reaching for the moon and stuff. I think there was a lot of creativity on set and a lot of collaborating and, and artistic trying things out and testing. And that was great. And that's the whole thing with the movies. Like you can have all the creativity, all the talent, creative control because he was funding it himself doesn't mean it'll come together at the end. I feel sad for the criticism, but at the end of the day, this is what it is, right? When you're an artist, you put your work out there. And I think that's the courage you go into things mm -hmm. when you're an artist and you accept that sometimes you produce something that isn't amazing or that could have been amazing. And it's just like such a letdown because we could see what it could have been. You want to root for those few people that are fighting to maintain independent movies and true creativity that isn't bound to fourth quarter earnings and you know short-term profits and, and that kind of thing and so you hope that the movies that are more independent can really keep doing special things and inspire those that want to get away from the big studios describe the movie in a word probably disappointing the best movies you would change nothing of and, and these kinds of movies there's uh, unfortunately you're just left thinking I wish they'd done that and couldn't they have left that out? Why did they? That's a weird decision, you know? There was just a lot of stuff that was not tight when it needed to be. And so it takes you out of the movie. You want to be able to be in the movie and just be completely forget that you were transported somewhere else that you're, you know, you forget that you're in your living room or forget that you're in a movie theater with a bunch of strangers, you know? And, yeah. and this movie kept taking me out of that. I'm reminded of everything everywhere all at once. Yeah. Do you remember that? Ah, uh, see, that movie yeah. was <laughs> yeah. daring. There's a whole scene where they become rocks in the one yeah. dimension, the one world. And so there's a lot of existential questions mm -hmm. on like consciousness and reality and what is consciousness made of. So they, they were able to tackle those things, but it was entertaining. It was creative. It was funny. It also had beautiful themes that were satisfying at the end, that were resolved mm -hmm. when it came to family. At the end, it was a dysfunctional family, and they realized how they need to kind of heal and come together again, and then they can save the world, as it were, right? With this one, yeah, you know, he's philosophizing almost to himself about consciousness. Where does that come from? It comes from a burst out of the soul, and it's, it's poetic, sure, and there's some, like, nice writing about, like, how every art form, you know, is related, but it, like, you can describe it in different ways, and it, it, there's some nice, interesting, tantalizing, you know, to, to eat, to, to, to munch on, you know, in terms of like some ways of looking at art. How painters stop time, how architecture is frozen music, how dancers combine time and space, musicians rhythmatize it, poets sing it. But like some badly made chocolate, the taste goes away after the first bite. Take four. 554. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's got us talking that's that's something you got to give the movie this movie has exhausted me i will be talking about this all night i'm probably not gonna sleep that's an achievement there are some movies that are not worth an extra breath <laughs> but i was just thinking it's kind of like 
an assignment at school that you worked so much on and you just couldn't get it right. You just couldn't like figure out how to get it to an A++, you know? Mm -hmm. It would be so nice if we put a lot of work into things and you get that kind of satisfying output. Mm -hmm. Don't always look creative stuff. Yeah. You can spend years agonizing, starting over from scratch over and over again. some stuff in there that was interesting but it Jacques just fresco yeah i wonder if there is some influence from people like Jacques fresco in terms of his designs for uh, future cities and a much more egalitarian more peaceful existence for the species to live in and then what was his name eisenstein the guy that wrote sacred economics you know the whole thing about getting rid of debt debt and interest mm -hmm. is a big part of what causes so much division and suffering and destruction you know that's something he says in the speech like debt you need to get rid of debt that's a big one Tear down the world of ready-made slums that those families that run the world shove you into. I think that's where it might have caused some controversy because the system right now loves debt, runs on debt. So again, that's what he's talking about, getting the conversation started. If we can have a big movie playing in theaters talking about erasing debt, that's pretty uh, controversial and pretty huge. If the movie was beautifully mm. executed. The yeah. movie could have been a great platform for conversation. Yeah. The song can have very deep lyrics, but if it's so boring and like unlistenable it's like painful to listen to it doesn't serve anything it also has to be a beautiful work of art in itself in terms of cohesiveness storytelling consistency you know needs to flow unfortunately that's where uh you know you gotta have it all come together i think is it ever a flop if you tried your no, best no it's not a flop when you try your best it's only a flop if you never try at all yeah i want this to be done i'm tired okay the movie exhausted me that was some stuff that we had to say about megalopolis but what did you guys think you agree was it uh, just a letdown will it be reappreciated reappraised let us know either way in the comments down below share your thoughts on our thoughts till next time thanks for watching peace discovered the principle of Megalon trying to save her life. She said she had good news. She had good news. Her secret. And then all was lost to me forever. This is my heart.